Hallelujah. Praise God. No more masks. Amen. 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 We haven't seen your faces in a long time. Take your neighbor so you look good. If they're wearing a mask, just ask them to take their mask off just for a few seconds. And say you look good. We've been waiting for this. Praise God. Well, I guess that's the same thing we've been doing this for a long time. Hallelujah. We've been doing this for a long time. You know, praise God. Hallelujah. You know, see how my quivers are done. That is like the one who's so big. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Just want to appreciate as well, Brother Mom and Andre. And uh, it's good to be with you. And uh, also appreciate our Zalan Sinatra in one night. Good to see you, Brother Praise God. Good to see Bali as well. Is Bali here? Is Bali here? She's here. Hey. Oh. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. We can't wait. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, we can't wait. Hallelujah. Um, we are so grateful as a Lord to be in his presence. Amen. Uh, without any waste of time, I want us to talk today about faith during the time of adversity. Um and uh, currently, there's a lot that's going on. Mm. Uh, but I like how Sisna led us in prayer. Mm. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Mm. Praise the name of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Do you believe that you are a people within a people? Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. You must believe that. Yeah. You must believe that. That is why even if the whole world is depressed, depression is not your portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remain steady. For he who watches over you never slumbers nor sleeps. Hallelujah. Praise God. Believe that. Listen, if, there, if ever there was a time for your faith to go to work, it is now. Hallelujah. Amen. I've said this many times. I don't want faith that works only when things are fine. Yeah, yeah. Right. I want faith that works even when I'm faced with opposition, even when I'm faced with adversity. I want to see faith go to work. Amen. And I'm excited about the challenges that lie ahead because it's yet another opportunity for God to prove himself. Sure. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Unfortunately, some of us will not see the goodness of the Lord because of the posture of your heart. You are, that is why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Please say it with me, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. And, and I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness. So when the Bible says the just shall live by faith, it is not referring to Noctula. It is not referring to some game. It is me. I shall live by faith. Praise God. So don't say, 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 say the just shall live by faith in the, in the, in the second person. Say it in the first person. I shall live by faith. Doesn't matter what the enemy is launching against you. You will, you will do well. You will prevail in the name of Jesus. Let me just uh, uh, bring the context before you, beloved, of, of what we are up against. There's a lot that is happening. And there are many moving pieces, as you can see. Um, you know, we are excited. <laughs> to see something miraculous in our lifetime. After 50 years of abortion laws in America, for the first time you had a situation on the 24th of June where the judges, conservative judges, were able to rule against abortion on demand in America. That is, that is, that is seismic, beloved. You know? That is a seismic event. I'll tell you why. Because these people, you might remember that about uh, a, a, a year ago, there was a celebration yeah. at the New York, uh, 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 I think it was uh, 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 the New York Stock Exchange. They were even popping champagnes that laws were approved in New York where you can abort a baby even at eight months. People were celebrating. 
abortion at eight months and that's how wicked these uncircumcised Philistines yeah. are. And while we were still wondering what on earth is happening, and here's another thing that I want you to, to understand, beloved. God is already exposing, like now I'm saying in prayer, there is more that we're still going to see. God is exposing the hearts of these people. They tell us they are fighting for democracy while killing babies. Why we're still amazed at the abortion laws where you can abort a baby at six months, even at eight, eight months, that, that we're saying you can still abort a baby in California. You can still abort a baby even after birth. That is no longer abortion. That is blatant murder. And that is why we are celebrating what happened, beloved, on the 24th of June. I keep saying to you, God loves babies. Hallelujah. God loves children. And I, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that it be never normal to you that these people are mutilating children. Because they, not, they, they will not even stop at killing little babies. Believe me, they, 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 are, so, they are so wicked. Children are disappearing for body parts in case you didn't know that. You, you find children disappearing, beloved. Because they are, they are wicked, wicked medical institutions that will harvest people's organs, including especially children's organs, kidneys, high demand. High demand for children's kidneys. You'll find that there's a 60 year old who's just waiting for that uh, child to have their kidneys removed. Children's hearts, high demand for that. So, so believe me, there is wickedness and there is, there is trading, there is devilish, demonic trading that is happening behind the scenes and you, you wonder why children disappear. And you can rest assured that even those aborted babies, there is a multi-billion industry waiting for those uh, uh, body parts and, and different organs of those aborted babies. So, beloved, I can assure you, a big chunk of the enemy's business has been destroyed. Yeah. And here's the thing, the enemy is going to fight back. Yes. There will definitely be a backlash. That is why the church should not just over celebrate and relax and think to ourselves, okay, we are winning, we are winning. No, no, no. If ever there was time for warfare, it is now. Don't you ever think that the devil is going to take this lying down. Already there are people who are fighting because they want to kill babies. Remember that these people are, they, 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 they no longer can do like the olden days where children will be literally sacrificed into Molech. But now the enemy needs to be culture sensitive. What is another way? In, because the devil loves killing babies. I want you to understand that's the trademark of the enemy, killing children. Whenever there is a Moses that is about to be born, there will be infanticide. Babies must be killed. When there is a Jesus that is about to be born, babies must be killed. That is the trademark of the enemy. Even if there is no savior that the ascension is about to be born, children must be sacrificed into a fiery fence. But now, they understand that is brutal in the context of our culture. So then they bring abortion as an alternative. So we need to stand. This war is not over. Yeah. They will fight up until this court order is reversed. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want us just to, 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 to continue to pray. So those, those are some of the moving pieces in the realm of the spirit. Because believe me, whatever happens in America will reverberate throughout the whole globe. It will affect all of us. The ripple effect from America is huge, beloved. And then another moving piece is the Russia-Ukrainian situation that is plunging world's economies into chaos. That's a form of economic adversity that we are going to be dealing with. And I want you to understand that we are already feeling the pinch. I keep asking you, do you notice how difficult shopping is these days? It's been very hard, beloved. And again, what is so strange is the, the very cold that they were telling us is not good for the environment. 
Europe is, to, is now resorting to using coal for energy. Why? Because Russia has decided we're going to reduce gas supply to Europe. And all of this is now causing chaos again. Europe is now going to move into a situation where they begin to shortchange third world countries where there's coal. Yeah. That is why we need to pray for countries like South Africa which are coal producing. This is what I'm telling you. So these are challenges that we are up against and but I want us to talk about faith in the midst of all of this. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Firstly, you need to understand that most of what we are dealing with is God's judgment upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Sure. We are here, not because of some, you know, event which is natural and all of us should relax and just uh, uh, wait for these things to pass naturally. We're dealing with disobedience that has resulted in God's judgment. Hallelujah. And I want us to be reminded of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 20. And uh, I want you to see what God says in His Word so that we understand the context of the things that we'll be experiencing in this season. It says, however, if you do not obey the Lord your God, and do not carefully follow his commands and decrees I'm giving you today. All these curses will come on, on you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city, cursed in the country. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed. The crops of your land and the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. You will be cursed when you come in, and you will be cursed when you go out. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and rebuke in everything you put your hand to, up until you are totally destroyed and come to sudden ruin, because of the evil you have done in forsaking Him. We are here because we live in a Babylonian system that is rebellious against God and His Word. And I want us to understand that there is judgment that is beginning to come upon this Babylonian system. If you read in the same chapter, Deuteronomy 28, read verse 24, it says, The Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust and powder. It will come down from the skies until you are destroyed. And again, beloved, when you talk about drought, the people of this world will tell me it's climate change. Yeah. And I want us to address that issue today. It is not climate change. Amen? Amen. 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 We are not dealing with climate change. It's not El Nino either. Yeah. But this is as a result of our disobedience as humanity. This is as a result of our defiance against God's word. Amen? Amen. So don't allow anyone to convince you about climate change in terms of what's happening upon the world. We need to take care of our environment. Yes, clean energy is preferred. But I can guarantee you, even if we will have clean energy, there will still be problems in nature as long as man is rebellious against God. Amen. Let me remind you that in Sodom and in Gomorrah, there was no such thing as carbon emissions that were polluting nature. Yeah. During Noah's time, there was no industrialization as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not telling you. But both times experienced extreme, extreme destruction. Mm -hmm. sure. Not because of climate change, mm -hmm. simply because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you what happened in Sodom and what happened in the world during the time of Noah will still happen as well, as long as the world is disobedient to the word of God. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about stages of judgment, God's judgment, before we talk about how you can apply faith in the midst of God's judgment. That's the beauty of this whole thing. Hallelujah. Amen. You can still walk in faith even in the midst of judgment of God over nations. But before you walk in faith, let's talk about Stages of God's judgment. Number one, God is faithful in the sense that He will send messengers. 
prophetic messengers who will warn nations. Yeah. And during this stage, God will actually be pleading with people to repent. Mm -hmm. Literally plead with people. Mm -hmm. Because God is gracious. Mm -hmm. God is merciful. Amen. His mercy endures forever. Amen. His loving kindness is better than life. Sure. So, he will, during the stage, bring people who will warn and people who will be sounding a word of caution. And these prophets need to be very careful. They must say what God is saying to nations. Yeah. And I want you to appreciate the importance, especially in this hour, because now we are actually we are still in the warning phase, but we are about to transition to the second phase of God's judgment, which is abandonment. Abandonment. Mm -hmm. sure. Sure. This is when God abandons humanity. In other words, he abandons you to the desires of your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Can, I, can I just say something about the desires of your heart? Sure. You are not safe in the desires of your heart yeah. if your heart is not sanctified. Sure. Sure. That's what I'm your desires can't be trusted. The safest place is in God's perfect will. Not your desires. Imagine if all of us will have our desires fulfilled. There will be chaos here on earth. Because we are not holy in our desires. That is why we need to pray like David. Create in me a clean heart. Renew within me the right spirit. So that when I desire things, I desire what you desire. So that when my desires are fulfilled, praise the name of Jesus, there will be order, even in this planet. When other people's desires are fulfilled, believe me, there is chaos. You will see lawlessness like you have never seen before. Because the heart of a man is wicked beyond imagination. And the Bible says, who has a cure for it? The only cure for a human heart is salvation through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. So I want us to, to, to appreciate the, the phase of, of the first stage of warning as part of God's judgment, you know, before judgment breaks out. In Isaiah chapter 60, chapter 26, verses 9 to 10. You can read this one there, Isaiah chapter 26, verses 9 to 10. I want to talk about... <laughs> The importance of God's grace working together with the truth. Unfortunately, one of the reasons why we are sleeping into the next phase of God's judgment, which is abandonment, mm -hmm. is because the prophets have not been loyal to God's word. Mm -hmm. I want you to see something here in this passage, Isaiah 26, verses 9 and 10. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Let me interrupt you, Mom. Do you see this? Yeah. When judgments come upon the earth, that's the only time that people tend to learn about God's righteousness. Mm. But notice what it says in the, in, the, in the next verse. But when grace is shown to the wicked, mm -hmm. they do not learn. They don't learn righteousness. Yeah. This is a very powerful verse, beloved. If you really want to explain what's happening, even in our churches, yeah. when you bombard wicked people with the message of grace, sure. they never learn anything about righteousness. But when you tell them that God's judgment is coming, which is a missing message, yeah. when you tell them that God's judgment is coming, that is when some will wake up to the truth that, hey, I need to put my house in order. Yeah. Now, do you see do you see the travesty that has been taking place at our pulpits? Travesty of the highest order. When we bombard wicked people, unrepentant people with the message of grace. And unfortunately, these people will only get their wake-up call during the time of judgment. When they realize, oh, the word of God is true. That is why millions will get saved during the time of tribulation. Why? Because people learn about righteousness during the time of judgment. Yes, yeah. Yo. Yeah. That is why you need to appreciate that you received salvation.
before there is utter judgment upon the earth. Yes. It is grace yes. 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 that you have received. Christ has been revealed to you. You did not need fire and brimstone to fall upon the planet before you realize that there is Yeshua in heaven. That is grace. That is grace. And please cherish that. Upate loko jenye kaliza mantumwa. Cherish that. Praise the name of Jesus. Because there are people that will only have their eyes opened during the time of tribulation. So that is why the prophet Isaiah says, only judgment can teach people about God's righteousness. Because when you bombard the wicked with the message of grace, they don't learn anything about righteousness. So here's the thing. The solution to this, especially for us who are preachers of the gospel, if you are called to minister the word of God, you must bear in mind what it says, beloved, in the book of uh, 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 John chapter 2. Sorry, it's John chapter 1, verses uh, 14 and 17. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. The Bible says, the law came through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In other words, you must never teach grace without te teaching the whole truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Grace and truth must go together so that people can learn about God's righteousness. Amen. Amen. So may God help us because we live in a world where people want to determine the message. We live in a world where preachers are not dependent on the Holy Spirit as to what message to preach. They want to hear what the crowds want to hear. May the Lord help us. And I want you to understand that we are moving to the next phase of God's judgment. From warnings, prophets have come. Some have even been killed. Warning this generation of God's coming judgment. So the next phase we're moving to is abandonment. And I want you to note in scripture, signs of a nation that has been abandoned by God. Because we do have signs even in the scriptures, you know. Uh, the, how does abandonment look like? And this is as a result of humanity refusing to repent. Because you see, you cannot refuse to repent perpetually. At some point, there will be a stop to it. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that is why it is so important that when you hear the word of God, today is the day of salvation. Yeah. Don't postpone Hallelujah. your repentance. Don't procrastinate your repentance. Do it today. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. The first stage of or a sign of a nation uh, uh, that is uh, 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 now living in abandonment is a hardened conscience. No. Amen. Amen. Of sure. I want you to appreciate something. You can go my home pass here too. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. I want you to appreciate something, Bazalona. Whether you are born again or not born again, everybody has a conscience. Mm, yeah. And this is God consciousness. You are conscious that there is God somewhere. You can deny it. You can philosophically deny it. You can play all kinds of ideological and philosophical gymnastics, but in your heart of hearts, something says there is God. There is God somewhere. When you sleep, even if you are an atheist, when you sleep at night, there are questions that you cannot answer. Because in your heart of hearts, you know there is God. But you put, you, you put up a brave face in debates, debating against the existence of God. But your heart in your bed condemns you. Hallelujah. But there comes a point when you insist, insist that there is no God. When your conscience becomes hardened. And this is what we see in, in the book of 1 uh, Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 2. The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith mm -hmm. and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Mm -hmm. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars mm -hmm. whose consciences have been seared mm. as with a hot iron. Uh -huh. A conscience that is seared as with a, a hot iron. In other words, that word seared simply means a conscience that has been scorched by heat to a point of obliteration. Your conscience has been obliterated by fire. 
from the kingdom of darkness because you are responding to teachings that are being disseminated by demons and powers of darkness. You respond to the hypocrisy that comes from the pit of hell and your, your conscience is scorched, bent up to a point of obliteration. That is why, have you ever had people, for example, I, I hear this a lot, especially in, in therapy situations, and, and um, when, when people, maybe you are doing a mental state examination of a serial killer, yeah. someone who is a rapist, yeah. you do a mental state examination as a therapist, one of the things that even non-believing therapists will tell you that there was emptiness in his yeah. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I saw emptiness in his eyes. You know what? It's amazing how these things work. This is a reality that holds true even for non-believers. A non-believer, psychologist, non-believer will tell you that when I looked into his eyes, I saw emptiness. Why? Because the scripture says your eyes are a window to your soul. That's what I'm why do they say I saw emptiness? And these are guys, sometimes we have killed 30 people. And then the, the, the verdict is passed. And then the judge says, do you have anything to say? And then the guy will stand up and say, no, nothing. I have nothing to say. I'm repentant. I have nothing to say. You know why? The conscience is dead. Scorched with the fire of hell to a point of obliteration. They are empty. Mm. Empty. Members of sin. That is as a result of refusal to repent after many times when the word of God comes to you. Yeah. Please don't take it for granted that we stand here every Sunday and we beseech you by the message yeah. of the Lord, repent, repent. That is why, again, Basalwani, if you go to a church that does not teach repentance, they are not doing you any favor. In actual fact, they are hardening your conscience. They are making your conscience impervious to the truth. Literally, they are hardening your conscience. We need messages of repentance so that we again have this God consciousness within us activated all the time between wrong and right. We need to have that line clearly drawn. There is right and there is wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the second stage of abandonment, the sign that indeed people have been abandoned, you know, again, so the hardened conscience, you'll see all these killings that take place, uh, people unrepentant, you'll see molestation of little babies, molestation of grains, in a nation where people are so corrupt that they, they no longer apologize for their corruption. Yeah. Heads of states, that are unapologetic for their corruption. Sure. But they explain away their corruption. Sure. Conscience is dead. Conscience is dead. Counselors who are voted into power only to steal food parcels. To steal food parcels from people that are needy. You are a counselor. You have a salary. You, you are well off, some of them. But you steal food parcels. Conscience is dead. Dead conscience. So, this is what the scriptures refer to. And again, you'll discover that many of these people have been told to change your ways. Many times. Change your ways. Change your ways. Up until that message has no meaning at all to them. And that can happen to a believer as well. That can happen to a believer. When you are told, this is the way. We don't do things this way. Your conscience dies. You are in the church, but your conscience is dead. For you, the process of worship is only mechanical. No substance at all. You are lifting up hands as a matter of habit. But there is absolutely no substance that you can bring before the Father. Why? Because you are dead in your conscience. And I pray that none of us will ever reach that stage. And here's another, uh, listen, uh, uh, the, the, maybe before I move on to this uh, next sign of uh, uh, abandonment. The Amplified Version of the passage that uh, Mpazele read, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, uh, it says, Their consciences are seared as with a branding iron, leaving them incapable of ethical functioning. When umuntu ethics, 
you absolutely have no sense of ethics anymore. In the workplace, you are unethical. In your business, you are unethical. You, you do brutal things. I mean, we, we were chatting uh, uh, with some of the brothers and sisters about business, uh, that there are people who actually will hijack tankers full of uh, uh, fuel, yeah. and then steal the fuel to, 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 to pump into their own vehicles. Yeah. So that they do business without paying for fuel. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, your conscience is dead, man. Yeah. How how do you run business business on yeah. stolen fuel? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you do that? Yeah. Unethical. Yeah. And I pray in Jesus' name that if you have tendencies of of, of towards poor ethics, mm -hmm. even in your workplace, you might be dying in your conscience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Watch out for this issue. Of, of, of blaring of, 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 of ethics, you know. When, when all of a sudden, things that used to be black and white to you, all of a sudden they yeah. become gray. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of time, yeah. There, there, there's now, things, things are kind of blaring now between right and wrong. Watch out for that. That could be a sign of a dying conscience. Now, here's another one. The, 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 this, the other critical sign is that they lose common sense. So not only is your conscience dying, but now you're losing even common sense. Let's read about it, Mampas, in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Now, not only are we born with a, a, a God consciousness, but we're also born with common sense. Do you know that before you're even saved, you have a very good sense of what's wrong and what's right? Yes, amen. Before you're even born again, Again, we can deceive one another, you know, what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. Many times when people ask, is this wrong? They know. <laughs> they know. <laughs> they know. Yeah. They know. Yeah. It's not that we always want to rationalize our wrongdoing. Yeah. Yeah. We want endorsements. Yeah. We want endorsements for our wrongdoing. So that is why sometimes when you fail to actually provide a good argument, for what this person is asking, then they will take it as an approval step. Okay, since you have failed to tell me what's wrong with smoking dark, I will smoke. I will smoke Zor. Because you could not give me a biblical answer, a biblical argument as to why I should not smoke Zor. Therefore, we will smoke Zor. Now, you take the very same person, a person who speaks like that, in their heart they know what's wrong. They, they know exactly that this is not right, but they are just waiting for you to, 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 to either approve or disapprove whatever they want to do. But this is what the Word of God says in Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For since the creation of the world, mm. God's invisible qualities... His eternal power and divine nature mm -hmm. have been clearly seen, mm -hmm. being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. You are without excuse whether born again or not born again. Because God's invisible qualities of righteousness have been made clearly seen. They are obvious. Nature speaks of divine distinction. Yes, what I you, you sometimes have to observe animals. You can see animals that lean towards wickedness, and then you can see an animal that leans towards righteousness. It is not arbitrary that Jesus Christ is called the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Again, it is not arbitrary that Satan is referred to as a serpent. You can see the slithering tendencies of a serpent, and then you understand, ah, there is wickedness. Before there is a preaching, how come this animal always slithers? How come I find it in the house without knowing when did it enter? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yo. You can tell, no, okay, there is such a thing as wickedness. Yeah. One of my boys, I won't mention which one. <laughs> uh, when they were very small, when they were very small, he could, he, he used to take things. He would be talking with you while manipulating things. I mean, he was about two years old and while manipulating things. How? Boy, what are you doing? 
And, and you can tell that he, he's naughty with one hand and holding a conversation in another. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, who taught him this? <laughs> and the mere fact that he can hide this. He's about two years old, but he knows that this is not right. Yeah. We have not preached to him. Yeah. He's not yet born again. Yeah. But he knows that what I'm doing is not right and I must hide it. Mm. Why? Because the truth about God has been made plain, plain to all men. Yeah. So that man is without excuse. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, when you receive demonic teachings long enough, even your common sense will elude you. Things which are supposed to be very plain, all of a sudden become so abstract. Think about this, Pastor Should it really, really be an abstract concept that we should not be killing babies? I would think that that would be common sense. If you are fighting for democratic rights, and if you are fighting for humanity, does it really make sense that you have to have a debate at the highest court so, as to whether babies should be killed? Yeah, yeah. So, Why are people who are professors at Harvard fighting for babies to be killed? A Harvard professor. You know what? With all the education, but common sense has eluded them. That's what I'm here. And these are very same people who don't mind to go to some secret island somewhere to sleep with underage girls. They don't mind doing that. But on the mainland, they are fighting for justice. But in secret islands, they are sleeping with underage girls. Common sense. Common sense is out of the window. So I want us to again see, beloved, that this is the world we live in, and these are signs that we are being abandoned by God. I'm sorry to say this to you. But I will not be surprised if the wicked leaders of this world manipulate the justice system in America to a point that all these conservative judges are removed yeah. and liberal judges are reinstated so that abortion laws again are reverted back to where they were. I will not be surprised if that happened. Why? Because there is no common sense at all. Sure. The next phase of abandonment is when God removes the moral hedge around you. Are you aware that God has put a hedge of morality around you? So that even if you are wicked, you, you will be amazed that even, 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 even a drug dealer will tell you that, mm, I can't do that. <laughs> even a drug dealer, they will tell you, no, 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 I'm, I'm a bad person, but that I won't do. Do you know why they say that? It's because God has put a moral hedge around each and every human being. No matter how sinful you are, every now and then, morality speaks in your heart. But there comes a point when even that hedge is removed. That is the last phase of abandonment. That is when God says, yeah, so whatever you've been craving, whatever you've been wanting to do, every wicked thought in your heart, then you fulfill it without any form of restriction or limitation. That is when you see people doing things that are unthinkable. You wonder what has got into this person's mind. And I believe we are there as well. We are there. The mere fact that we are playing with viruses that can kill millions. Believe me, we are there, beloved. We are there, right there. The mere fact that after this pandemic, they are not talking of another pandemic. And yeah. it's almost like uh, 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 people are wanting to wrap this thing up. Yeah. So. Morality has been totally destroyed. And there is no more moral hedge around us. This is clear. Uh, maybe Mam the same passage, Romans chapter 1, verses 24 to 25. Uh, if you can just read. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts. Yes, what I'm here. This is when, <laughs> when, when it says God handed them over. You have been insisting to do this. And God says no. 
Because even, if, even, even to you as an unbeliever, God will tell you, don't do this. Yeah. Don't do this. Repeatedly, don't do this. And then when you insist that you want to do it and you are unrepentant, many years. Before we get to the stage, beloved, beloved, because God is God is gracious. Before you get to the stage, God will give you years. Yes, of repentance. And that is why there is a scripture that says God overlooked their ignorance. Yeah. But now he demands yeah. repentance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So now there comes a stage when God says, no, 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 no. We cannot, you know, contend over this issue anymore. Mm. Do you want to do this? Then he hands you over to your desires. Mm. So this, 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 is, this is abandonment. This is the ultimate stage of abandonment. Mm. What are signs of abandonment, basically? You can just read. One of the signs is in that passage you're reading. If you can complete up to verse 25. Gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies mm -hmm. with one another. Mm -hmm. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Amen. If you read further, you realize that men begin to bend for other men. Yeah. Women bend for other women. Yeah. Homosexuality is one of the signs yeah. in a nation yeah. of abandonment. Yeah. What I'm telling you is not politically correct, no. but this is the reality in the spirit. Amen. Once you see prevalence of homosexuality sure. in any nation, you must know that that nation is living in the abandonment stage. And let me remind you that Sodom and Gomorrah was at this stage when the moral hedge was removed. Can you imagine when the angel of God comes and people say, we want to sleep with that man. And they say, no, 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 no. And, and, and then the question that could have been asked, but all of you are homosexuals. Why don't you sleep with one another? They want the man from heaven. Morality has been removed. Even when Lot is offering his daughter, they say, no, 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 we want those men from heaven. Yes. So, no more sense of morals. So now you see a situation where God can no longer tolerate that. Mm. There are limitations. God is gracious. God is merciful. But he will not tolerate evil forever. Amen. Amen. So that, 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 that is why the next stage after abandonment is the outpouring of God's wrath. So you have warnings, you have abandonment, and then you have the outpouring. That is why we're going to have a time of tribulation. During the time of tribulation, that is when it's almost like God is cleansing the earth by fire. That's what Peter says anyway. The earth is being purged by fire. For all the filth that we've been handing ourselves into. Amen. You'll be amazed that during that stage, many will repent. That is why back to the book of Isaiah chapter 26, judgment teaches people righteousness. All of a sudden, during that time, things will not be blurry anymore. People will know that this is wicked and this is righteous. This is wrong, this is right. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Now here's the thing, we are now in the phase, we are just on the verge of abandonment. Warnings have been sounded, we are now on the verge of abandonment. The question that we need to ask ourselves, where does this leave us, where does this leave us as the church? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. The most important thing, beloved, is that you walk in obedience. Mm -hmm. Walk in obedience. I beseech you by the mercies of the Lord. And I, I want to say this again and again and again. God is not looking for perfect people, but God is looking for people that say, Father, I want to do your will. I will stumble at times, but I want to crawl towards you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if I stop, I've said this to you, even if it means walking on your knees towards God, do it. This is Isaiah chapter 3. Verses 8 to 10. It says, Jerusalem staggers, Judah is falling. Their words and deeds are against the Lord, defying his glorious presence. The look on their faces testifies against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. 
this is another thing was a lot when when when, when you when people reach a stage of abandonment for some strange reason they are not satisfied with doing sin in their private space they want to parade it uh -huh. just like you see on dstv sin being paraded people are not happy for in all these documentaries that we see hmm? Hmm? and i pray that none of you will entertain yourself with those things Yes, Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Switch off this uh, camera. Young man, wake up the young man. Switch off the, 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 the camera. 